Lauren Pew 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 Bobert, Congresswoman from Colorado, loves freedom for a certain type of American, namely herself. The freedom to pose with rifles in the background for official congressional business and to ignore COVID. The freedom to release an attack ad against Speaker Pelosi featuring gunshot sounds. So many guns and so much freedom. It's just others who apparently don't deserve freedom to take paternity leave for your newly adopted twins if you're Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, for instance. For that, you get Lauren the insult comic attacks because you're a man and you can't breastfeed and insert stupid laugh track. Yeah. But the Colorado Congresswoman's favorite targets are her black, brown, and Muslim colleagues, like Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, the first Somali-American and one of the first two Muslim women to serve in Congress. Over the Thanksgiving holiday, video emerged showing Bo Bird sharing this made-up story to her supporters about supposedly being in an elevator with Congresswoman Omar. I look to my left, and there she is, oh. Ilhan Omar. Oops. And I said, well... She doesn't have a backpack. We should be fine. Oh. <laughs> and after that little ditty dropped, somebody must have told Lauren that she should issue an apology, for which she, and she did. Um, and she said that she was sorry, not for what she did, but that, you know, people were sorry that they heard it wrong or whatever. But then, because let's face it, she's not super bright. She went and stirred the pot all over again during a call arranged by House leadership today with Representative Omar. The Minnesota congresswoman called her out, saying, quote, Bobert refused to publicly acknowledge her hurtful and dangerous comments. She instead doubled down on her rhetoric, and I decided to end the unproductive call. Now, this is not about one hateful statement or one politician. It's about a party that is mainstream bigotry and hatred. The wide open Islamophobia from the Republican Party is allowed to fester and thrive in 2021. And no one, not its members nor its leaders, is going to do a damn thing about it because they clearly believe that bigotry and hatred are the speed balls their voters crave. And that truly is the absolute worst. And joining me now is Dean Obadala, MSNBC columnist and host of the Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM. Uh, I'm not even going to talk. I'm just going to let you talk. Your thoughts on the apology and on the comments themselves from over. First of all, Joy, do you hear it? Do you hear the deafening silence of the GOP leadership who is not condemning Congressman Bobart? Why? Remember, they used to tell us, oh, they were afraid of Trump. Trump's not here, folks. They agree with this garbage. They understand the power of bigotry. Look, GOP bigotry towards Muslims has been a sport since 2012. It began with Herman Cain and Newt Gingrich saying, we want Sharia law. We don't want Sharia law. We're watching them try to impose their religious beliefs on us right now. Then you had Donald Trump take it to Islam hates us. I'm going to ban all Muslims. The result of this was the real world. We saw hate crimes against our community. So Lowen Boebert, spewing anti-Muslim bigotry for months, not just this joke, this joke, but for months saying that Congressman Omar is a terrorist sympathizer, smearing Congresswoman Tlaib, who's the other Muslim woman in Congress, for the Jihad squad. This is who they are. She fits perfectly in this party. You know, it's a competition. Who's most vile? They're all tied. It's her, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Madison Cawthorn, Paul Gozar. The party is about bigotry and the embrace of violence. Let's remind everyone, Congressman Bobart on January 6th, that morning, tweeted, today is 1776. No, mm -hmm. it wasn't, but on, that was right-wing code for, today is the day we have a violent revolution to prevent Donald Trump from being removed and keep Donald Trump in power. She hung around with the three percenters who are white nationalists, photographed with them, loved them. Some of them were arrested for being involved in January 6th. So, you know, Joy, the idea of bigotry, no surprise. Of violence, yeah. no yeah. surprise. What the January 6th committee should be doing is subpoenaing Lauren Bobar to explain what is 1776? Why did she tweet that hours before the attack? Why is she now defending the terrorists who were in jail for January 6th? And why did she hang out with people in the three percenters, the white nationalist militia? And some of those people are under arrest. So she is vile. She's despicable. She's the GOP. That's who they are.